Your priests, O Lord, shall be clothed with justice. Your holy ones shall ring out their joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome, my brothers and sisters. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Luigi's Crosopi, who is was an oratorian, who is a priest. And as we continue to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask for God's pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I am greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. In my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, as blessed Mary and Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me and to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, since you have inflamed the heart of your priest, St. Luigi, so that he might be an example of genuine charity towards those who suffer. Grant to us that, with the help of his intercession, we may love our brethren with sincere hearts and daily seek the kingdom of God and his justice. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. This morning's Holy Mass has been offered for the intentions of Father Lewis on his feast day at the request of the oratory. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he cried, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them to the least of them. Then tidings reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, and covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he made proclamation and published through Nineveh, by the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and let them cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence which is in his hands. Who knows, God may yet repent and turn from his fierce anger so that we perish not. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way. God repented of the evil which he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. 
Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the sound of my pleading. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But with you is found forgiveness, that you may be revered. If you, o For with the Lord there is mercy, in him is plentiful redemption. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. If you are Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. <clears throat> Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus entered the village, and a woman named Martha received him into her house, and she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with many serving, and she went to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. One thing is needful. Mary has chosen the good portion which shall not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. In a culture of hectic schedules and the relentless pursuit of productivity, we are tempted to measure our wealth by how busy we are, by how much we accomplish, by how well we meet the expectations of other people. No preaching on this text may provide a rich opportunity to address a cultural malaise. Many people in our congregations likely identify with Martha, we've got so many Marthas, a feeling pulled in different directions, feeling worried and distracted by many things. These seems, uh, seem to be common threads of life in our fast-paced world. And yet, as Jesus says in this chapter, can you or can any of you by worrying add a single hour to the span of life? We know that worrying does no good, and that much of what we worry about is not so important in the larger scheme of things, and yet we cannot seem to quell or understand the anxious thoughts and frantic activity. It is true that much of our business and distractions stems from the noblest of intentions. We want to provide for our families we want to give our children every opportunity they can get to enrich their lives. We want to serve our neighbors. And yes, we want to even serve the Lord. Indeed, where would the church be without its Marthas? Those faithful people who perform tasks of hospitality and service so vital, making the church a welcoming and a well-functioning community. And yet in all these activities, Jesus says only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen a portion that is so perfect, that is listening to the Lord. This story obviously is leaving us, uh, <clears throat> is left suspended. We do not know what happened next, whether Martha or Mary 
uh, were reconciled, whether uh, they were able to enjoy the meal that Martha was preparing, whether Martha was finally able to sit and give her full attention to Jesus, to listen to his words. We don't, but we do know that Jesus invites all of us who are worried and are distracted by many things to sit and rest in his presence, to hear his words, to hear his words of grace, and to know that we are loved and valued children of God, to be renewed in faith and strengthened for service. And there is only, there is a need of only one thing, attention to our guest, attention to Jesus, because Jesus knocks to our hearts every day. We need to give him attention and listen to his words and listen to his teachings. As it turns out, our guest is also our host, that is Jesus, with abundant gifts to give. We are called today and challenged today to live according to the gospel values, to live according to Jesus' teachings and listen to him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, <coughs> of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Yes. Blessed be God, of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Praise the Lord of Father, good and good of all his relations. Receive, O oh Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of St. Luigi's Crosopi, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant us your pardon through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of Saint Luigi's Crosopi, you bid your church to rejoice. So too, you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words and preaching, and keep her safe in answer of his prayer, to his prayers. And so with company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, Lord of hosts, heaven and earth, 
Hosanna in the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, o Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the wood and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of course an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her chest spouse, with her blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Philip Neri, Saint Benedict, Saint Luigi's Crusoe, so, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence with the life of very now. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, the other bishops, all the clergy and entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who we are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and there is it. 
this day. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. But I can now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter my life, but only say the word, and my soul shall be
This is the steward faithful and prudent, whom the Lord set over his household to give them their allowance of food at the proper time. Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, <clears throat> confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast of St. Luigi's Crosopi, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.